Welcome back. I missed you all so much. Welcome back everybody to yet another episode of the Daily Cooking Show, the Daily Cooking Streams. I hope you're all having a beautiful Wednesday. If you're watching this live, it is currently 5 p.m. Eastern time. Um, it is a lovely Wednesday if you're watching it back at another time. Uh, it's good to have you there as well. Hello, hi. Um, I see that we have all the classics in chat at the moment. We have Dolingo, we have Moonhun, we have Scrubla, we have Kaze. I saw Audio Murphy in there as well. Welcome on in, everybody. It's good to see all of you again. New lighting. Yes, kind of. I just changed around some settings on my front camera, and I was told that it looks better. Also, I forgot one of my living room lights. Oh, no. A bit of a mistake. Aha. That's better. Okay. Not enough lighting. Not enough lighting. That's better. Hello, Evil Dead. Hello to... Uh, I don't know actually how to say the thing. It's a little bit long. Hello to Denise. Welcome on in everybody. It's good to see all of you. I'm pretty excited for today's stream. We'll get into what we're doing in a second. First things first, how's everybody's day going? Hope you're all having a good day today. Hope you're all having a good Wednesday. It's cold. It's cold as hell in New York. Okay, I had to walk to the grocery store through ice. It was pretty brutal. It was 20 degrees outside. I did all of that for you because you're all so special to me. Um, and you might be asking me what's on the menu. You can always type an exclamation mark menu in the chat, but we'll get into what we're doing in just a second. Um, also, thank you so much for the sub, Sierra. Thank you, thank you. Already 24 months for two years. Also, hello to Iliam Dina. Hello, hello. Wow, it's good to see all of you, and, and, and Dennis, Denise, it's, it's lovely to have you as always. Okay, so my friends, today we'll be doing a little dish uh, that is inspired by a Hainanese chicken rice. It's not exactly a completely authentic uh, Hainanese chicken rice. It is a chicken rice at the end of the day. Um, and what, so, you know, before we even get into what I'll be doing specifically and how mine is going to be a little bit different, we'll talk about what a Hainanese chicken rice is. This is a quintessential Singaporean street food. Okay, anybody from Singapore, they can tell you about how much they love Hainanese chicken rice. It's also a dish that I love to death. Okay, everybody, I'm gonna need you all to stay with me for a second. At its simplest, it is boiled chicken and rice. You might be going, oh, boiled chicken. Oh, it's boiled, it's bland. It's not gonna be seared at all. It's not gonna have any flavor. It's not gonna have any color on it. My friends, boiling things is sometimes okay. This is going to be a chicken, traditionally. It's uh, made, you know, you make a whole chicken. You're going to submerge it in some water. You add some pandan leaves. You add some scallions, some ginger, some garlic. Um, and then you'd let that like really gently simmer. Then you'd take out the chicken, you would shock it in some ice water, then you'd paint it with some sesame oil afterwards to stop the skin from getting too gummy. And what you're really looking for is a super juicy, gently cooked chicken. Really, really juicy, really gentle, really tender. But more than anything, the flavor there should be really delicate. And you're also looking for a specific texture of the skin. What people do is they typically almost exfoliate the outside of the chicken skin with a little bit of salt, and that's what we'll be doing today as well. Um, and then it's served with a couple of condiments. You do like a chili garlic sauce, you can do like a soy sauce, like a scallion oil. We'll be doing a couple of my own sauces for today. Um, and then you take some of the broth and then you take some of the chicken fat and then you make a beautiful chicken rice out of that, right? So you take some shallots, some garlic, some ginger, you fry all that together into fat uh, and then you make the rice from the broth. So the super flavorful aromatic rice with this really gentle, delicate chicken that you eat with the sauce. Now, mine is not gonna be entirely traditional. I'm going to be making my broth out of a couple of other things. My broth is gonna have some soy sauce. It's gonna have some Shaoshang wine in it featured as well. It's gonna have some white pepper. Um, it's also gonna have some cilantro, some coriander. Uh, in it as well because I really want that aromatic quality in it. Um, and we'll also be doing two separate sauces. We'll be doing a chili garlic sauce. I'll be doing a chili garlic sauce with some coriander in it as well. And we'll be doing a dark soy sauce, uh, like a little bit sweet to just then dip everything else into. We're gonna serve it with some cucumber, fairly traditional. So again, I'm kind of breaking and deviating from uh, actual like, tr uh, like Singaporean tradition in the way that I'll be making this today but it'll still be really, really delicious at the end of the day. So let's talk about each of the ingredients for today. Is everybody ready? You know what I want to hear? I want to hear resounding, unanimous yes chef from everybody watching right now. Please and thank you. Yes chef, perfect, it's rolling in. Oh, that's exactly what I want to see. Perfect, it's good to see all of you. I missed you all so much. Okay, so my friends, first and foremost, we have some chicken. Now, this chicken, you might be noticing, oh, do I'm going, this isn't a whole chicken. This is not a whole chicken. You're right, we had some legs and we had some breasts because a couple of streams ago, we broke down a whole chicken. We made a stock separately using that and we'll still be using that stock today, but we have some chicken breasts and some chicken legs. And so what's going to happen is we're going to have the breasts cook a little bit less than the legs themselves, okay? 
The legs themselves, we want to cook it to around 165, 175 internal, so it's like really tender. But the breasts, we want to cook to only 155. So we're going to pull these out of the liquid at different times. Okay? And we're going to keep the skin intact. It's not going to be a crispy skin. Okay? Also, uh, Tule, is that the case? Okay, thank you for reminding me. Uh, that's very sweet of you. Okay, so you'll see what, exactly what we'll do with the chicken. Okay, and the next most important component, my friends, for the chicken rice. So typically you would start with the whole chicken uh, and you would do it in water. This is a thing of chicken stock that I have already made. We already made this a couple of streams ago and because I already have this, I'm just going to use this for today. We're just going to get a much more concentrated, much more chickeny flavor today um, because traditionally you would just do a whole chicken boiled in water, but it's not really cooked for that long that you'd get a super concentrated stock like this. Okay, so we'll be using this. Um, additionally, one of the most important components that's basically going to go into everything. This is going to go into the boiling liquid. This is going to go into the rice. This is going to be in everything. It is going to be some lovely little scallions, my friends. Okay, these bad boys right here. We're going to make a little sauce out of them. You can't have too many scallions. This is like one of the like fundamental aromatic components in today's dish, and it's going to be featured and given a lot of love. Uh, next, we have some of these chilies. Okay, I have some of these bird's eye chilies, I believe. Also, Lego Batman, I'm glad you're watching this on TV. It is the cooking show after all. Um, some birds eye chilies. We're going to do a chili garlic sauce out of these. Okay. Um, it's going to be really, really nice. It's going to be delicious. Next, uh, what else do we have? Ginger. This is one of the most important components. Okay. This is one of the most important components that you cannot skip out on at all. Okay. Everything is going to feature the ginger, the, the broth, the rice, um, as well as the sauce that we're making. Okay. Also, Denise, that's not necessarily true. Leeks and, and scallions, they're just different sizes and different toughnesses, but they're still alliums at the end of the day. Okay. So that's that. Um, what else do we have? We have some dark soy sauce. Okay. We're going to put some into the broth and we're going to uh, add a little bit to the dark soy sauce that we're making. And then, my friends, not particularly a traditional component to go into the rice or the broth, but I wanted some fresh cilantro. Some fresh cilantro, aka fresh coriander. This is going to go into the broth. Um, it's going to be a nice little garnish as well. It's going to be super, super delicious in all of this. It's going to be great. Uh, what else do we have to look at here? What else do we have to talk about? Sesame oil. The sesame oil is going to be kind of important. Um, after we sort of boil the chicken, we're going to paint it with the sesame oil to stop the skin from drying out. And it's going to add like a very nice light toasted sesame flavor. Um, it's a pretty important step. It's a pretty important step. Okay, we're not going to hammer the chicken with heat. It's not going to be in like boiling water. It's going to be a very, very gentle poaching liquid because if the water for the chicken is boiling, the outside of it is going to get like really overcooked and grainy, okay? Uh, and the inside is going to be like undercooked by the time, you know, you kind of want it to be, right? So gentle cooking and the sesame oil is going to stop the skin from drying out. Really important stuff. Um, we have a little cucumber for garnish. Okay, that worked out. I got a little nervous that I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, you know, actually execute on that. But I did I did the toss successfully, my friends. Okay, and then another really, really important component, my friends, is gonna be some shallots. We have some shallots here as well. So the shallots are gonna get chopped up, they're gonna go into the rice, they're gonna go into the broth. So we have a lot of really important aromatic components. We have shallots, and we have garlic, and we have scallions, and we have ginger. It's gonna be super aromatic. Everything is gonna be super, super delicious today. I'm really excited about it. Um, and I do believe that should be it for now. So everybody, two things of housekeeping. First and foremost, um, you know, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, groceries are expensive. Please help to support the cost of the streams and the actual investment that it takes every single time. Uh, go to my Patreon. You can type an exclamation mark Patreon in chat. You can go to the about section. Uh, you can just scroll down as well for a link to it. Any and all support that is appreciated because I want to continue to keep these streams free for everybody to watch. So if you're able to contribute, it'd be really appreciated, but of course, no pressure at all. Second thing of housekeeping, uh, unfortunately, um, so you know how sometimes I like to display like some chat messages on the screen? I'll still be answering people's questions. I won't be able to display them on the screen today. Um, the service went down for a little bit. So please, you know, stand by. Please stay with us for the duration of that while we wait for it to come back online. Um, and also we have the YouTube channel, right? That's not linked on the Twitch. Um, if you can't stay through the whole stream, you can of course catch up on the VOD. So also welcome on in set 345. Hello, hello. That being said, everybody, are we ready to begin? Are you ready to begin? Are you ready to witness this beautiful chicken rice? You know what I want to hear? I don't even have to tell you what to say to me anymore. That's what I want to see. Perfect. Good job. You guys are doing so good today. Okay. Order of operations, my friends. 
First up, we're going to prep everything that we actually need um, for the broth itself. It's gonna be a fairly short stream today. So let's actually go ahead and begin that now. And of course, if you have any questions whatsoever, I'm here to help you learn how to cook and I would be happy to answer anything as needed. So my friends, let's head over to the cutting board. Um, also set, this is an English only chat, I am afraid. Um, I do apologize. I will ask my mods to help me out there as needed. Okay, my friends, so let's talk about this a little bit. Let's talk about this a little bit. Um, first thing that we're actually going to do, I wanna show you guys something really, really important, okay? This is my homemade broth that we did the other day. Over here, rising to the top is all of the chicken fat. This is the stuff that we really, really wanna keep. So gently, I think the tool of choice for me is gonna be a couple of chopsticks. What I want to do is essentially lift off this chicken fat because we're going to go ahead and cook um we're going to just get a lot of that like chicken oil it's going to be really really delicious we're going to cook some of the components for the rice in it it's going to be great okay so we're going to try our best oh i should not have broken it any further we're going to try our best to pick up uh, one chunk at a time without getting any of the broth in and that's why i'm using chopsticks hopefully to be like a little bit delicate with it so I do have a sieve. It's just that the water is a little gelatinous at the moment. I do have a sieve though. I can do with that, but that only works if the broth is not as gelatinous because of how thick it is, okay, it will become a problem. So my fingers are also slipping a little bit right now. Ah. So I'm just going to just pick off this fat. And again, we're going to still scoop off the fat. We're gonna use like a little gravy separator as well later on. I just need a little bit of fat right now to get us started. Also, my finger ended up getting a little bit oily, so excuse me in the meantime. You know what? You know what? You're right, this might be inefficient. I do have a slightly slotted spoon that I feel like would do an okay job of this. But if not, my friends, again, we're just going to ladle it off the top and it's gonna be good. Okay, so we're actually just going to pick it up like this. I think that's a lot easier. The only problem with doing this, we still have a lot of like that residual broth in there and it, th that means like the oil is just gonna pop like crazy whenever we heat it up but that's okay, it'll be fine. I'm not too worried about it. You know what? I think that did fine. That did fine. I happen to have a slotted spoon. It did a good job, kind of. We're just trying to get as much of the liquid off of it as possible. It's just gonna be a little bit annoying. Okay, so that's the majority of the fat. We don't have to worry about the rest of the fat for now. Um, we're going to get more fat out of the chicken breast and out of the chicken legs as it cooks. This was just the fat that we previously had when we made the broth. I'm gonna go ahead and set this aside behind me. My friends, the chicken fat has a lot of flavor. Okay, that's what we're gonna fry, like all the garlic, all the ginger, and it's gonna be super delicious. This broth right here, I'm going to go ahead and pour this into my lovely Dutch oven that I have already set aside. Okay, and again, not particularly traditional to ready use ready-made broth for a Hainanese chicken rice. To me, it's just gonna add like another dimension, another level of flavor to the whole thing, okay? I'm also just gonna go ahead and pop this in my dishwasher. In the meantime, while I have a little second of downtime. Okay, and also, I can adjust this really, really quickly. Yeah, there we go. Okay, sweet. So, my friends, let's talk about everything else that has to go into the broth. We have some garlic, we have some ginger, all that's gonna go in now. First things first though, we're gonna start with these scallions. Now, what's really nice about having scallions like this on hand, especially because we'll be doing a broth, is we can use all of these root ends for the sake of flavoring the broth. We don't have to necessarily throw them away, okay? So we're going to go ahead and chop off all of these root ends, all of these bad boys, and this is just gonna get into the broth and it's gonna get straightened out, okay? They're just gonna add a little bit of extra allium flavor to the whole deal. And then we're going to add just a couple of whole scallions as well. So we're not really wasting anything this way, okay? So we just have two whole scallions. The rest of these, I'm going to be using them for something else later on. These bad boys, I'm just going to drop directly into the pot. Excellent, next step. Let's talk about what else we actually want going into this broth. Again, we want this to be super aromatic. We want this to be super delicious. All right, so let's keep it moving. Let's keep figuring this out. We're going to want some garlic, my friend. Oh, some ginger, excuse me. Uh, Dolingo asks, when making your own broth, is there a rule of thumb for how much water you should add per amount of veggies or bones added? My general rule of thumb is enough to kind of cover it. It's okay to have too much water because you can always reduce it later on. 
but not having enough water means that not all of it is being extracted at once. So you basically just want enough to cover the whole thing, okay? And that's why you don't want like a pot that's like too wide or anything for the amount of ingredients, because then you might just have a disproportionate ratio of like your volume of water to the actual volume of ingredients you have. Okay, so let's begin with this, my friends. Let's get my waste bowl nice and ready to go. Ah, perfect. And now we're gonna get some ginger in here. Okay, also hello possum, welcome on in. Um, I'm going to just start by shaving off like this dried, like that dried out like piece. It didn't look too good at the moment. Um, okay, I think this piece of ginger should be good. Okay, all I'm going to do, okay, you can use this, you know what, we'll use a spoon today. We're not gonna waste any of this nice fresh ginger. We're going to use a spoon. Yeah, I did it, my, I can't. I get annoyed doing this. It is effective though. It just tends to like squirt like ginger juice all over the place. But you can indeed use a spoon to peel your ginger. Okay. In fact, I should have probably also gloved up before I did this because it can be a little bit harsh. It can be a little abrasive on your hands, but that's okay. So my friends, we're just going through all of this ginger. We're peeling it up. Okay, and then we're going to just chop it up into a couple of pieces. We don't want to chop this too finely for when it goes into the broth, because then we could end up over extracting it. And yes, uh, Moonheart, you can do that. It's just because of the irregular shape of the ginger, it can become a little bit difficult to follow all of its grooves that way. Okay, we're almost done. This is the, this is the meme way of peeling ginger. Normally I just slice it off, I end up wasting some, but I've decided today, because this is such a nice looking piece of ginger, I may as well take a little bit of precaution with, with doing this. Okay, that's enough of that. Did not like how that felt on my hands at all, but that's okay. Ah. Um, what would happen if I didn't peel it? So it'd be totally fine for this step not to peel it. Um, you just would have to wash it, and I did not wash my ginger. So I'm just gonna cut this in half, but again, I'm not going to um, do anything else with this because again, I don't want to over extract the ginger. Okay, I don't want this to become too gingery in flavor. We're just cutting it in half and we're leaving it like this. Okay, lovely. Next, I'm gonna just take a bench scraper and clean up my station really quickly. But yes, you don't necessarily have to peel it for applications like this. Um, if you're mincing it, I think it's just a nice step because you don't want like any of that dried out ginger skin um, in the thing that you're eating. But if it's like a whole piece, you just you could just theoretically wash it. Okay, next, let's do some garlic, my friends. Um, wait, did I not take out my garlic? I thought I took some out. I did take some out, I was correct. Okay, so for this garlic, we're not gonna do anything crazy either. Okay, we're just going to do like three cloves. In fact, that might be like a little too many. Two cloves will be okay for this, just two cloves. Okay, because again, I made the broth that already has like a little bit of garlic in it. So we just can do the two cloves for now. Okay, and all I'm gonna do my friends, I'm going to give it a little smash. Give a little smash just to be able to get the peel of it off. Again, you don't really have to do this step, but smashing it very slightly um, will give the whole thing a little bit more garlic flavor as opposed to just leaving the clove whole. So it's multi, you know, it's multi-purpose in its way. I like giving it a little smasher purely for flavor reasons, and then while I'm at it, just get rid of the skin, okay? No, I did not forget I don't need to peel it. I'm doing the crushing and I may as well already peel it because I've already smashed it. Okay, so two garlic cloves, gonna be going into the pot as well, my friends. Next, what am I missing? We got the garlic, now we gotta do some shallots. Okay, the shallots, once again, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a shallot and I'm gonna basically cut it in half and we're gonna throw it in. I want all of these pieces whole so that we can easily take it out after. And yes, don't worry, Dolingo, we'll get to the garlic press later on. We just don't want this to become too garlic or anything, okay? So all I'm gonna do, I'm going to go ahead and grab just two shallots. Look at the difference, look at the size difference of these shallots. Ah, I forgot to set my phone to do not disturb. We need more women like you? Too bad I'm not a woman. What a, what a shame, what a tragedy that, that's a, that's a weird thing to say. I don't like that. Okay, we're gonna cut the head of it off. 
We're going to also cut the good of it off. And we're just gonna go ahead and cut this in half, my friends. We're gonna go ahead and cut this in half. And we're just gonna peel off the skin really quick. Uh, mods, please and thank you. We're just gonna go ahead and peel up the shell at my foot. And again, we're keeping all of these components nice and whole so that everything is just really, really able to uh, pluck out later on. We're just really, really easily able to take out everything. Okay. Okay, sweet. Two shallots. Ah! One cut in half, the other just sort of kept whole. I'm gonna go ahead and throw that into the pot. Okay, let's head to the pot now. We're almost done, my friends. We're almost done. So, last couple things. We're going to do a splash of dark soy sauce. I'm not really gonna be measuring this or anything. I'm just gonna do a little splash of dark soy sauce. Okay. Right, something like that. I'm also gonna do a splash of the Shaoxing wine. Okay. Because I wanna get like a really, really delicious, like super, super aromatic broth by the end of this, okay? So a little splash of that going in. Excellent. That's gonna be it for the Shaoxing wine. And then we're also going to do a couple of white peppercorns. And I do emphasize this, everybody. Oh, this is Shaoxing wine, AKA Liaoju. Um, this is like a cooking wine that is like used really, really often, uh, like in Chinese cooking. It adds like a very nice like saltiness to the whole thing, a nice little bit of acidity. And yes, homie, uh, shallots are a little bit expensive for stock, but I got a whole sack of shallots for like a dollar a pound. So I do not mind at all. Um, okay, sweet. And now my friends, we're going to do a couple of white peppercorns. Just a couple. And I do mean a couple. This adds a really, really strong pungency. It adds a really strong funk. It can be delicious. It can become very unpleasant very quickly if you add too much of it. I cannot emphasize enough, use this sparingly, okay? So we're doing, genuinely, just a few of these white peppercorns. Come on. Oh, that, that is like way too many. I meant like four or five peppercorns, okay? One, two, three, four, five. That should be plenty for something like this. I promise you, do not use it, like too much of this. You can do like an eighth of a teaspoon if it's already ground. Whole peppercorn is four to five maximum. But Denise, not really. I find that white peppercorns, they're very, very pungent in a way that black peppercorns aren't. They're two very different spices. These are not interchangeable spices at all, okay? And so, the whole goal of all of this, my friends, we're going to build a stock that is full of flavor. Okay, it's going to be a really, really delicious poaching liquid for the chicken. And then the rice itself is gonna be based on that. And then we're gonna add some of the broth itself to the sauce, to the dipping sauce. So we wanna make sure that this broth is flavorful. Also, am I a trained chef? Not in the slightest. I'm a home cook, food and food. Okay, and then last step, my friends, I'm gonna show you what we're going to do. We're basically going to exfoliate the chicken a little bit. We're going to rub it down with salt, and that's for the sake of the texture of the skin. The texture of the skin in a Hainanese chicken, or in this case, just a plain like chicken rice, is really, really important, okay? So, we got all the flavor prepped. It's the scallions, we got the shallots, the dark soy sauce, the Shaoxing wine, the garlic, the ginger, the shallots, the white peppercorns, and then finally, the chicken is gonna be going into this. So, let's head back over here. Is everybody following along so far? Is everybody enjoying themselves today? Only thing really quickly, I feel like my camera is a little bit dark today. That should be better. We'll go ahead and figure that out later on. What's my pet peeve about chef spoilers? Um, that's a very big question. That's a, ooh, what's my one pet peeve? Boys, if you start me off on this rant, I will not stop anytime soon. Let's exfoliate the chicken first and then we'll get back to your question. How's that sound? That's, a, that's always a very, very exciting rant for me to, uh, to go off about. Okay, so my friends, this, is my chicken. And again, traditionally, I wanna clarify, Hainanese chicken rice is made with whole chickens. You would do these whole poached chickens. There is one advantage to having your legs and your breast already separated. There is one advantage, and that is that they cook at different times. We're going to take the temperature of the breast. Once it hits 155, we're gonna take it out and plunge it in some ice water, okay? When you are cooking like a whole chicken, you risk your breast drying out by the time that your legs are also done. Okay, so this is gonna be perfect. The only difference that you have to keep in mind, okay, let's say you're following a traditional recipe for your Hainanese chicken rice. The breasts are gonna cook a lot quicker because they're off the bone. They're not attached to the breastplate. 
So you have to be really, really mindful of that, my friends. Okay. So I'm going to get some kosher salt ready. And again, this is mostly for the sake of the texture of the skin. You don't really have to wash off. I see people when they do chicken rice, they like wash off the chicken after they do this. It's not necessarily in the slightest. Okay. All we're going to do, we're going to go love up. Uh, no, we're not going to make crispy skin at all. It's going to be like a gelatinous skin. It's going to be kind of squishy, if anything. So it's not going to be crispy at all. It's really, really interesting stuff. So, my friends, we're going to take some salt. We're going to generously cover all of this with salt. Whole thing. All right? A lot of it is still going to end up washing off in the broth itself. Okay? And now, we're going to rub it in. We're just going to rub the salt in. We're going to rub it in. We're going to smooth out the skin. Okay? This is going to give us a very nice uh, texture on the skin itself. You don't have to wash it off after anything. Okay? It's all going to get dissolved into the broth, and we need a seasoned broth anyways. All right. Beautiful. So just keep it going. Keep it going, my friends. That's right. We are essentially exfoliating the outside of this chicken skin. We're rubbing that salt in. We're rubbing it in. Also, welcome on in, rabbit. This might seem a little bit odd, but I'm telling you, it does make a tangible difference in the texture of the skin. Okay? This is how we get really, really pleasant, squishy, boiled chicken skin. Guys, we're eating boiled chicken today, and it's going to be delicious. Not everything in a kitchen has to always be seared and browned. This is a dish all about delicate flavors and paying attention to the preparation. Okay? So we're just going through it all. We're rubbing the salt in. Okay? It's dissolving in as well, simultaneously. Perfect. One last breast to go through, my friends. So we're going to rub it down. Lovely. And we're going, we're being nice and thorough about this. Okay. We're going, we're going to be nice and thorough about this. And yes, I am too, uh, trust me, Dennis. Um, I am a sucker for like crispy chicken skin, but I'm telling you with Hainanese chicken rice, it can be very gentle and very, very delicate. It can be really, really special. Oh no, my tender fell off the breast. And also, Kaze, it did not, we are not on the heat yet. We're intentionally starting off the chicken on a cold heat. We're intentionally starting this off on a cold heat. And the reason we're doing that is because we don't want to plunge these into boiling water. We want these to slowly cook through. If we heated up the water too much in advance, we would end up overcooking the outside by the time that the inside got done. Okay? And so, that's why we're starting it off in cold water and we're being really, really patient. How much does my cooking setup cost, Zeno? Zeno, if you're talking about all the stuff for the stream itself and my cameras, thousands. Close to like $3,000, $4,000, I think. It's a lot. Um, okay. So, everything has been thoroughly rubbed down. We've rubbed down the chicken, my friends. Okay. And now, we're going to go ahead and take this on over to the pot. And we're just going to gently lower it in. Gently, gently lower it in. Okay? So this is our pot. Once again, this is our Dutch oven. It is currently full of all of that delicious broth, the garlic, the ginger, the shallots, the scallion, the, the Shaoxing wine, the soy sauce. Okay? It's really, really delicious stuff. And now, we're going to go ahead. We're going to go ahead and tuck in the legs. We're just gently putting it inside. Gently. Okay? Gently putting in the legs. And again, with this cooking process, we really want to make sure that we're not disrupting the skin too much. We want to keep that skin as intact as possible. Okay? So we're just putting in the breast now, being nice and delicate with all of this. We don't want these meats to fall apart or anything. Beautiful. And now, my friends, look at that. Beautiful. So, my friends, all we've done so far, all we've done so far, We've just lowered the chicken inside of the broth that we made. This is a homemade chicken broth. We flavored it with the dark soy sauce, flavored it with the Shaoxing wine, flavored it with the garlic, flavored it with the ginger, the shallots, and the scallion as well, and some white peppercorns. And we rubbed down the chicken with some salt. We rubbed it down with the salt, and now we're just turning on a medium heat. We never want to have this thing be boiling. We never want it boiling. I want to emphasize that to you. You don't want to boil this chicken to death. The chicken breasts themselves, after it comes up to a heat, might take around uh, 10 to 12 minutes. We'll give it a little temperature test on the inside. The legs might take a little bit longer. Okay? It's really, really important that we do not overcook anything here. 
because that's how you get this really dry, unpleasant, gummy skin on the outside, and then you get that dry, overcooked uh, chicken breast on the inside. Yes, uh, Munha, we'll be using a thermometer for this. 165 is not the magic number, uh, Chibi, welcome on in. 155 is the magic number for breasts. For the legs, it's about 170. 165, so, so let's talk about food safety for a second. Let's talk about food safety. There is one massive, massive misconception, especially when it comes to chicken safety. Is everybody listening? I wanna hear the yes chef right now. Chibi, I don't mean to put you on blast like this, but there's a really huge misconception when it comes to food safety. And it is that chicken has to be cooked to 165 for it to be safe to eat. That is not true. You can hold it at a slightly lower temperature for a longer amount of time, and it will be just as safe. The reason why people cook it to 165 is because in food service, it's your easy way of knowing you won't kill anybody, but in reality, it's just as safe as heating chicken up to 155 and holding it at 155. At 165, immediately all the bacteria is dead. At 155, for just a couple of minutes, for just a couple of minutes, okay, it's gonna be safer. So, just as safe. That's how you stop getting really overcooked, really, really dry chicken. People are so paranoid when it comes to cooking chicken. They think that you have to cook it to death. People think that you have to cook it to 165 for it to be deemed to be safe. And that's not true at all. Okay. 155 is my sweet spot for the breasts. And then for the legs, I do 170 for tenderness reasons. So we're not going to boil this. We're going to keep this at a light simmer maximum. Uh, homie, I promise you, with a little bit of carryover cooking and holding it at 155, it will be okay. It's not just about hitting a target temperature. Okay, I need you to understand again, bacterial safety, food safety, is a relationship between both temperature and time. 165, yes, theoretically kills it immediately, but holding something at 155 will be just as effective, okay? I want to really clarify that right now. It's very important. This is a massive culinary misconception. Massive. And so, that's not right, homie. I would, I would implore you, in this case, to use a little bit of Google. But this is a little bit more, a uh, little bit more recent, a little bit more contemporary cooking knowledge. I did not mean to be so dismissive about it, but I would appreciate you listening. That's all. Okay. So, let's go back over here, my friends. Let's go back to the cutting board. I'm going to go ahead and quickly rinse off my knife. Okay. And again, I'm not cooking like raw or undercooked or pink chicken. I'm cooking chicken to 155. It's basically the same, it's fine. So, once again, my friends, we currently have the broth going, we have the broth boiling. We have to set up a couple of things. So when the chicken comes out, we're going to plunge it into ice water to stop it from overcooking and to get the skin to tense up. And then we're going to get a station where we're going to basically brush the chicken with a little bit of sesame oil to stop the skin from drying out. Okay? So in order to achieve this, we're going to need two things. We're going to need a nice big bowl. I know this bowl is occupying the whole frame. Um, we're going to go ahead and fill this with water. Do I have any ice? in the freezer at the moment, I do have some ice. Okay, that's good. We're going to throw some ice cubes in here, my friends. Yeah, it's a massive bowl. Ooh, homie, that's a, uh... what? This is really passive aggressive. Whoa. Ouch. Okay, it's fine. Okay, I'd prefer to move on from this topic. How's that sound? My friends, we're filling up a bowl with some ice and then we're gonna fill it up with some water. So again, we wanna be able to shock the chicken after it cooks. Okay, we wanna be able to shock the chicken. It's gonna cause the skin to tense up. Um, and then we are going to go ahead and paint it with some sesame oil. Okay. 
Guys, let's move on. I don't like whatever is happening right now. I don't like the vibes of whatever is happening right now. Let's please move on to something else. Thank you. Okay, so a bunch of ice cubes. Look at these two little ice cubes. They're hexagon shaped. Isn't that neat? I think that's pretty neat. I think that's pretty cool. How do you make those? I just have a hexagon shaped ice cube tray. That's all. So I'm gonna fill this up with some cold water. Okay, and this is just gonna be ready for whenever the chicken comes out. It was pretty important that we went ahead and we got this done in advance, okay? We wanna go ahead and get this done in advance so that we can go ahead and just shock the chicken and just have that station ready to go. You have to have all of you prepped done. The other thing that we need to do is we need to set up the painting station. So let's figure this out. Is this tray going to be big enough? We want a sheet tray, okay? And we want a sheet tray with a wire rack on it that will let any excess moisture or oil drip off of it. Traditionally, with Hainanese chicken rice, you'd have these whole chickens and you'd have them hanging, okay? We don't have that kind of a setup at home and we're not working with whole chickens, we're working with chicken parts. So we're gonna work with a sheet tray instead. Sheet tray and uh, a little wire rack on top of it. So what's gonna happen is the chicken's gonna get shocked in the ice water and then it's gonna go here and it's gonna get painted with the sesame oil. Ah, oh, okay, first thing though, I'm going to go ahead, sorry, I didn't mean to hit you guys, I do apologize for that. I'm just checking on my water here. The poaching liquid is looking okay at the moment. I'm gonna go ahead and line the bottom with foil. And I'm just doing that for my, you know, ease later on not having to clean my sheet for anything. You don't have to do this step, my friends. Also, welcome on in, Blue Bounty. All that we did was we set the chicken to poach. So that's our station, my friends. Really, really simple. We're just gonna have the ice water and we're gonna have the sheet tray after all of this comes out, okay? So we're going to go ahead and move on to the next thing. And we're actually going to just do a quick little recap. Oh, actually, I forgot one thing. I did forget one thing. I wanna go ahead and toss a little bit of cilantro into the water. Not traditional, but I just wanted to get a little bit of extra aroma. Also, welcome on in, Bun Bun. It's lovely to see you. We're gonna toss some cilantro into the broth itself just to make it a little bit fluid aromatic. Not traditional, but still really, really delicious. Okay? Just go on, I'm gonna go ahead and just toss that in, just tuck that in really quickly. Beautiful. We're gonna get a super delicious broth this way. The stock is going to be incredible. Okay? I'm gonna go ahead and put that away now. Excellent. Everybody, let's do a little recap session. So, so far, we've only accomplished one thing. We've set the chicken to cook, okay? For this chicken rice, this is going to be a very gently poached chicken. We rub the chicken down with salt to make the skin nice and smooth. We're going to cook the breast to 155. We're gonna cook the legs to about 170. So we're going to have a temperature, or we're gonna have a little probe thermometer to check on that whenever it gets going, okay? Um, once it's ready to come out, we're going to take it, plunge it into ice water, and then paint it with sesame oil on a sheet tray with a wire rack. The water that's cooking in is this lovely homemade chicken stock I made. Okay, it has some coriander in it, it has some shallots, it has some garlic, it has some ginger, it has some scallions, it has some white peppercorns, dark soy sauce, and Shaoxing wine. Okay, this is not a traditional broth for a Hainanese chicken rice. This is my own. It's just heavily inspired by a Hainanese chicken rice. And so now we have to think about the other components that are actually going to go into this today. Um, we're going to be making the rice portion. We're also going to be making a couple of dipping sauces, which are gonna be really, really exciting. And I believe now would be a good time to start getting on some of the prep. For the rice portion itself, we're gonna fry some shallots, some uh, garlic and some ginger all together. It's gonna be super delicious. We're gonna fry it in some chicken fat, and then we're gonna add the rice in and cook it in the broth. So it's gonna be super flavorful. It's gonna be lovely. So let's get started on everything that we need for that, my friends. Is everybody following along so far? Uh, and possum, there is no difference between coriander and cilantro. They're just used, it's just two names for the same thing, used by different people. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with some of the shallots. Okay, we're going to need shallots in several portions today. This is going to be just one shallot for the rice portion and one shallot for the sauce portion. So I'm going to go ahead and glove up. I'm gonna go ahead and glove up. Get these bad boys on me. 
And again, we don't want a lot of shallots. We don't want them to be overpowering. And no dolingo. Shallots, I mean, you couldn't theoretically replace these with tiny onions, but the taste of them is a little bit more pungent. It's a little bit more like garlicky to me almost. Okay? So, let's talk about these bad boys. For the rice itself, for the shallots that are gonna go into the rice, because I'm gonna make like this delicious shallot oil, I want a very, very finely chopped shallot. Very finely chopped. Okay? We're gonna go ahead and cut the head off. We're gonna go ahead and slice this in half. And we're gonna go ahead and peel this. Again, we don't want too much shallot. We don't want this to become overpowering or anything. But we want this to be finely chopped. And the reason we want it to be finely chopped is because if it's too coarse, it won't really melt into the rice. We want it to impart its natural sweetness into the rice. It's gonna be super, super delicious. Okay? And so the finer you chop it, the more it's essentially going to melt and break down and impart said sweetness into the whole rice. So, into this little bowl. And again, we're gonna be fine. We're gonna be delicate with the whole thing. Also happy to help Scorpio. We're going to make a bunch of little parallel thin incisions down the length of the shallot. Just like that, my friends. Nice little parallel incisions. And we're essentially very finely fanning out the shallot here. We're fa finally like fanning it out, okay? Just like that. And then we're going to do the same to the other half. So both halves will be very, very finely fanned out just like this. A small knife would be a little bit more delicate for this. Okay? And now, really, really finely mince this up and we're going to get these beautiful baby cubes, my friends. Look at these little teeny tiny fine mincings of shallot. Beautiful. Just going through the whole thing and we're paying attention to the pot at the same time. Again, we never want that pot of chicken to be at a rolling boil. We never want to destroy that chicken, my friends. Okay, we want to cook it gently. We want to be delicate with it. You want to be nice to it. And look at these lovely little shallots. If I had a British accent, it'd be a shallot or something like that. But luckily, I'm not. So we're going to go ahead and take this. We're going to go ahead and scrape it up. We're going to put it into a little bowl that we've set aside here. Okay. We're going to go ahead and do the same exact thing to the other shallot half, okay? Nice and finely, finely go at it. Finely mince it up, my friends. Does it look good? Is it similar? I can't tell. Ooh, it is beginning to simmer. Okay, we're actually going to finish up the shallot and then we're going to go back to the pot. Okay, that should be good. And then I also have like this little big chunk here that I'm just going to go ahead and process up a little bit. Oh no, Munha, is it lagging for you? Oh guys, did I hit it? Did I, <laughs> why does anime food look so good and it's just gonna be my food? Is that what this is? Now grab it, wait, is this lag from the stream? Or is it something on your end? Okay, let's head back to the stove, my friends. Okay, great. So, my friends, look at this pot. And in fact, this is the kind of assembly that we want. We want this gently. Ge I do mean gently. When I say gently, I mean gently. Everybody, what did I say? I want to hear my answer and then chef afterwards. My answer, blank chef. How do I want this pot cooking? Yeah, 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 yeah. Moon, huh? You just said, there we go. Good correction, you caught yourself. Very good, I'm glad that you all caught on. That's right. Very gently. We do not want to overcook the outside of that chicken. Is that clear? We don't want to boil this thing to death. This is what I mean when I say poaching, okay? In cooking, you will see people often make a distinction between blanching and poaching, and boiling is used interchangeably. Poaching means to gently, gently, not even like simmering something in some hot liquid. Blanching means you're dunking something into boiling liquid. We're gently going at this with green vegetables. When we don't want to overcook it, we just blanch it for like a minute or two in boiling water and we take it out. With this chicken, because it's thick and we have to cook it through, we gently poach it. There's times to poach and there's times to blanch. And we do not blanch chicken, okay? We don't want to blanch it, we want to poach it. And so it's going. And you can see the skin starting to puff up a little bit. It's getting super, super aromatic. This broth, 
This broth actually smells heavenly. That smells so good. It smells like the ginger, it smells like the garlic, it smells like the soy sauce. That smells like a really damn delicious broth, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and gonna get a little sip of water. Mm. Lovely. Okay, and then we're gonna move on. So we're actually going to use not the garlic press. I think we're just gonna use the micro. Uh, what's it called? A micro plane. I forgot what it was called for a second. We're gonna use this bad boy to process up the garlic and the ginger. Okay. And we're gonna do these one at a time. I'm just right now prepping the ones that I need for the rice itself. Okay. So let's head back over here, my friends. And we're gently cooking it. You see that? That's the maximum that we want to go. We want, do not want this to cook any more aggressively than it currently is. So we're going to, in fact, slightly lower that heat too. Slightly lower and we're setting a timer to about 10 minutes. And that's when we'll take the first internal temperature of the chicken. Okay. So my friends, we have this lovely little microplane right here. We're going to start with a bit of ginger. So let's, um, Let's go ahead and cut off a piece of ginger for us. I'm going to just throw that a uh, little bit away. So we're going to take this piece. I'm not doing the spoon peeling thing again. That's just not gonna happen. It's just not gonna happen. I'm just going to shave off side by side. Oh no, Durango is wasting some ginger. It'll be fine, I promise. Okay, a little bit more. Perfect. We got all the ginger skin off. Next, let's microplane this bad boy. In fact, we just can do this directly over the bowl to make our lives a little bit easier. And I, guys, you gotta have a good microplane. It is an excellent tool to have in a kitchen, especially a home kitchen, okay? So we're just going to go ahead and microplane in maybe like half of this thing of ginger. We'll see how we feel about it. And use as much of the length as possible. And if it's nice and sharp, it will be super smooth and super easy to do, okay? And if you feel like you're really struggling with your microplane, that's telling you that it's a little bit too dull, okay? So we're just going at this, we're just going at this. Okay, and we wanna, we wanna get all this beautiful, super, super finely minced, intense ginger. It's what's gonna flavor the rice for us today, my friends. Okay, I think that should be plenty. I don't want too much. I don't want the ginger to become overpowering, okay? It can easily become overpowering if you let it be that way. I'm gonna just take a little spoon. In fact, I'm not gonna take a little spoon yet because next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna do the garlic, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and set this bowl aside for a second. This little thing of ginger, we're going to use that a little bit later on. We're going to get some garlic cloves again. And this time I'm thinking like two to three garlic cloves. Yeah, look at that simmer. That's a very nice gentle simmer. In fact, it might be too aggressive. We'll go back to that in just a second. Let's see that simmer, my friends. How's that doing? Okay. I can tell you right now, still a little too aggressive for my taste. And one thing we're going to do really quickly, one thing we are going to end up doing, I need to make sure that the chicken is fully submerged. I don't really want the chicken to be sort of peeking out over the top. Okay? I don't really want to flip the chicken. In fact, we might even just end up basting it like this. I don't want to flip the chicken because I don't want to rupture or damage the skin in any shape or form, okay? This broth is getting a little bit dirty and it's getting a little bit murky, but that's okay. Such is the nature of these things. It's getting super gently cooked, my friends. We're just poaching the top of it. We're just gently basing the whole thing. And you can see how smooth that chicken skin is because of the exfoliation that we did for it. Right. Delicious. Okay. In fact, if anything, we could just do some more water in here. I just don't want to dilute this whole thing too much. It should be okay though. So just basting it gently. Just going at it a little bit. 
And then in about seven minutes, we'll check the temperature on the breasts. Okay, so let's head back to the cutting board really quickly. All I'm going to do, my friends, I'm going to smash the garlic very slightly just so I can easily peel it up, okay? We don't want to crush this to death because I'm going to be using this over the microplane because I already have it out and I may as well not dirty my garlic press because I'm already doing this. We're going to do about three garlic cloves for the rice itself, okay? Just gently, gently smash it. Ugh. Thank you for stopping by, Bun Bun. It was lovely to have you. How's everybody else doing? We hanging in there? Is everybody following along so far? So essentially, we're going to be doing a chicken. We're going to be doing two sauces. Um, and we're going to be doing a rice dish uh, with it as well. Okay? And everything feeds into each other. The beauty of this dish is that everything is using the chicken fat. Everything is... Okay, this isn't like smashing at all. Everything is using the chicken fat. Everything is using like the chicken broth as well. Okay? So there's absolutely no waste with this kind of a dish. It's really, really gentle. It's really, really delicate. It's super, super delicious. You can't go wrong with a chicken rice, my friends. And it's also pretty easy. Okay, let's go ahead and grate in this garlic. Get it in there, my friends. Okay, and the reason I didn't feel the need to scoop out the ginger from before is because it's still gonna just end up going into this anyways, right? So it's gonna be perfect. It'll naturally clean itself up for this. And then afterwards, we'll scrape it up with a spoon. And so, my uh, I am okay with combining the shallots, the garlic, and the ginger all together because they're all going to be cooking at the same time, okay? They're all gonna be cooking together, so I'm okay with combining them all. Typically, I like fry my onions separately and then I add in my garlic and my ginger. In this case, because they're all going at the same time, we don't have to worry about doing any fancy separations like that. Three garlic cloves. It's gonna be a very flavorful uh, rice, my friends. Okay. Keep it going, keep it going, keep it grating. Get it done. Almost done. Ooh, that sounds lovely, Jack. Sounds really, really tasty. Okay. That should be all of the garlic. That should be all the ginger. We're going to go ahead and just scrape it off my microplane. The best I can. It's a little bit difficult to get in there sometimes, but I got the job done. Okay. So, all we have in here is super simple. Shallots, garlic, ginger. This is going to be the base of the flavor for the rice. Okay, it's all going to fry up in the chicken fat. It's going to be really, really delicious. It's going to be excellent. So, this I'm going to go ahead and set behind me. I don't think I need that whole bag of shallots anymore because we're only going to need a couple going forward. Okay, let's think about what else we need to do. So here is my idea for the rice. Here's my idea for the rice. It's not a particularly traditional chicken rice or anything. I want to do, I want to continue to clarify that, okay? It's not traditional chicken rice, but I want to essentially finish it with some fresh cilantro and I want to finish it with some fresh scallions at the end too, right? So it's going to cook in that chicken broth and then garnish it and finish it and let the cilantro really, really steam in. So we're gonna have to slice up some cilantro for that. Um, and then I guess we can get working with the sauces. Um, we have about three more minutes left on the chicken before we at least test it through the temperature and just see like how it's been doing so far, okay? I'm just continuing to base the top of it Right. Just continuing to baste it. And guys, let me tell you, that poaching liquid, it looks incredible. It looks lovely. The skin on top is getting really nice and tight. Okay, and that's exactly what we want to see with it. Perfect. We don't want to dirty the skin by any means. We just want to keep it washing, keep it going. And in just a few minutes, we'll get a little temperature probe and check on it. Check on my bad boys, see how they're doing. In fact, I might even just close the lid on this just to get the top cooked a little bit more evenly, okay? Just get the top cooked a little bit more evenly. We're gonna basically let it steam on itself for a little bit and see how it's doing. Okay, great. Um, I'm just taking a second to recap and think about what else we need to be doing. 
so the chicken is going. We're about to check the temperature. We got some of the stuff done for the rice um, because we're going to fry the shallots, fry the garlic, fry the ginger. We're going to take the temperature in just a second. We haven't begun on the sauces yet, so I think we'll do that soon. And I'm also just going to start putting a few things away, okay? Just start putting a few things away. Just make sure that's done and out of the way, my friends. Um, and my ice bath. In fact, I do think my ice bath could use a little bit more ice. So let's just do that really quickly. And I'm gonna wash off this knife because it's a carbon steel knife and I don't wanna leave it wet with food stuck on it for too long. So just gonna quickly rinse that bad boy off. Okay, that's been done. I know my cutting board doesn't look too pretty at the moment. I'm just going to scrape it up and clean it off. And then we're going to get a temperature reading on my chicken. So in fact, I don't think you guys have to see that. Does anybody have any questions so far about the process? This again, this is not a super traditional Hainanese chicken rice. I'm just taking a lot of inspiration from it. I'm taking a lot of techniques from it as well, okay? Does anybody have any questions so far? Okay. So it's time to do the first official temperature check. So that's the chicken, it's currently going. I have my probe thermometer right here, okay? And all I'm going to do is I'm going to stick this bad boy into the thickest part of the breast. We're doing the thickest part of the breast to make sure that the thickest part is actually cooked, okay? So let's see how it's going through now. And we wanna be very, very gentle with it. We don't wanna rupture the skin, okay? We wanna, we wanna treat this thing really, really delicately. So I'm just mostly picking it up from the bottom and then I'm sticking it in. Something like that, I think, would be okay. But again, I don't want to tear that skin. I don't want to be too aggressive with it. Okay, I've stuck it in. And now, I should have actually set another coaster for myself, but that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and grab my thermometer and we're going to see how the inside of it is doing. Whoa, that's hot. There's no way it's ready at 170, is it? <gasps> Gasp, did I overcook my chicken breasts? There's just no way. Oh no. 167, my friends, I think we have to pull it. Okay, I'm going to probe it again in one more place. I really am surprised if it got that cooked that much that quickly. I would be surprised if that was the case. I don't think it is. I think I got an inaccurate reading. 158, okay, let's go a little bit deeper. Let's go deeper inside. Oh my God, it's actually just at 157. Wait, this chicken is actually just cooked through. Holy shit, okay, sorry about that. I'm trying to be a little bit more PG, shouldn't have done that. Okay, great. In that case, Let's go ahead and take it and we're gonna plunge it in some ice water. Take this bad boy, we're gonna take just the breasts, we're gonna leave the legs in to poach a little bit longer. We're just going to take these breasts. Come on, big boy, come on, let's go. You got places to be, you got things to do. And we're gonna plunge it in the ice water. We're gonna take this breast. Okay, and we're plunging it in the ice water. Lovely, look at that. So. My friends, you may look at this and go, Dara, that is just a boiled chicken breast. Yes, that's what chicken rice is. That is what Hainanese chicken rice is. It is a gently, very, very gently poached, very, very gently cooked piece of chicken, okay? And so we're doing this now just to stop the cooking process. We're going to probe this one more time to make sure that the temperature is correct. The inside core temperature should be okay at this stage. Okay, and we're shocking it. We're shocking it to get the skin to tighten up a little bit. But we're going to give that one more little poke just to see how that bad boy's doing. How's she doing? Well, is it already cooled down quite a bit? I think that's where I wanted it. I think that's exactly where I wanted it. Wow. And just that short of cooking time? There's a part of me that is skeptical because I feel like that was like a little bit fast. I do feel like that was a little bit fast, but I think it should be okay. 
I can tell you by the tension of the chicken that it should be okay. I think that hit 155 on the inside before I shocked it in some ice water. Okay. And the only thing I'm going to do now, my friends, the only thing I'm going to do, we're just going to take out the breasts, just the breasts, and we're going to put it onto the sheet tray. Take out the breasts and put it onto the sheet tray. Beautiful. My kitchen is now like a little bit of a mess behind me. I just need a second to make some space, just to clear a little bit of space. Okay, and these bad boys, look at them go. Again, just gently, gently poached. That is the whole point of a chicken rice, okay? It is really, really gently cooked. It should be really, really moist. It should be really juicy, and it should be really tender on the inside, and it's gonna be served with dipping sauces. To a lot of people, this is very visually unappealing, and I understand that completely, I do. Trust me, but it's gonna get really, really delicious. Everybody, do you trust the process? Do you trust the process? I need, I need everybody's confidence. I need everybody's confidence to go through with this, okay? It's pretty important. Next, we're going to cook the legs for maybe about another 10 minutes or so. Because again, I want those legs to be tender. I want them to be tender, tender, tender. And so to stop, the chicken uh, breast skin from getting a little too gummy or anything, all we're going to do is just put a little bit of sesame oil, a little bit of toasted sesame oil. It's gonna stop it from drying out. And we're just gonna paint it very slightly with the sesame oil, okay? That's what this brush is for. And this is just gonna chill out. This chicken breast is just going to chill out until we're ready to eat it, okay? It's gonna get a little bit cold, that's totally okay. This is just to stop it from drying out because everything else is gonna be hot. The rice is gonna be hot, the broth is gonna be hot. It's gonna be really, really delicious. Okay, we're moving, we're setting this aside. We're just moving this aside because we wanna create some space for whenever the legs come off, okay? I'm going to go ahead and set this bad boy behind me somewhere, hopefully. I'm starting to run out of space here, but that's okay. The chicken legs, I'm going to go ahead and put another cover on, okay? And we're just keeping it going. We're just keeping it going. So. The breasts are done, the legs take a little longer because they're full of a lot of connective tissue, they're full of a lot of tendons that need a little bit of extra time to be able to get tender and everything, okay? We have over here set aside this beautiful chicken fat that the shallots, the garlic, and the ginger is gonna cook in. And then we're going to throw the rice into that and then we're going to go ahead and cook it up. So, before we continue, I think I should wash up a little bit of rice. So in my trusty little saucepan, here's what we're gonna do. We're going to use this essentially to measure out the amount of rice that we want for today. Okay? We're going to use this to measure out the amount of rice that we want. And then we're going to cook and make like the shallot ginger oil in all of this. Okay? It's gonna be great. So just dump that bad boy in. And guys, don't worry about cooking the legs too much. Those are a little bit more difficult to overcook. I did also run out of rice in this little container. I'm going to try and get a little bit more in here. And I'm using high glue rice for you today. Again, not particularly traditional, but I do love high glue rice. It's in between white rice and brown rice. It's got a little bit more fiber because it has the germ of it intact, but the brand of it is still polished off. Okay. So, high glue rice going into the jar. Wow, I'm almost done with another sack of this stuff. Can't believe it. I'm going through this left and right. Okay. Ah. I ended up, of course, spilling some on my table because why not? Okay, so that is in total, how much is that? That's like about a cup of rice or so. That's going to make like four portions. I might even do a little bit more rice because I have plenty of shallots and garlic and ginger for this today. Okay. And so my friends, the idea for this rice is going to be exactly the same as when we typically do it. I'm just not going to wash it in the saucepan itself because that saucepan is going to be dedicated in making the delicious flavored oil for the rice, okay? So that's all the rice that we'll need for today. And I think now would actually be a pretty decent time to wash it off. I'm gonna add some more ice cubes into my ice water though, really quickly. Everybody following along so far? I'm gonna show you all the pot as that's currently going. 
I would argue that's actually boiling a little too aggressively for me. Once again, I'm going to lower the heat on it and we're just gonna baste the top of the legs. The skin is really nice and tense on them, looking beautiful. Excellent. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and fill this water up with some more of these ice cubes that you guys can't really see happening right now, but that's okay. Um, so wait, what, what happened in chat? I see some discourse was started. Back to topic, uh, one pet peeve about chefs. Okay, so one really huge pet peeve about I have about, let's say, I mean, this is a very big complicated question because I have fundamental issues with TV chefs, boys. I have fundamental issues with TV chefs. Um, and so, one of my biggest issues, I guess, is the fact that you're essentially getting 30 minutes of content that is being mass produced. These are not tested recipes. They're not people that are particularly qualified to be teaching you, especially on, I don't know, something like the Food Network. All of them are people who are actually just commercially safe. All of them are pretty faces that are commercially safe. Okay, and none of them have a particularly interesting food background or a food perspective or a specific food passion. They're very, very safe industry people. I don't know if that really counts as like a pet peeve or anything, but that's like one huge gripe I have with uh, traditional cooking content, with traditional cooking medium. Okay, I'm just dumping in the rest of these ice cubes in the tray, or into the bowl rather. Okay, just gonna pop that back into the freezer. Ah, lovely. And also, thank you so much to Group Tricks for the Prime sub. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so here's what has to happen. We're going to wash this rice, and then we're going to do something unique. We're going to strain this rice after we wash it. Okay, the reason we're gonna strain this rice after we wash it is because we wanna include as much of this delicious homemade chicken broth that I've put the effort and love into making, and as little of the bland water as possible. Okay, I want this rice to soak up all the liquid. So, while I'm washing the rice, everybody, I'm going to go ahead and cut back to the stove camera. I'm gonna open up the chat on my phone. Let me go ahead and grab that right now, just so that I have that at the ready, okay? And so, if you have any questions while I'm washing the rice, this is the best time to ask me. Ah, great. And the chicken legs in total have about four minutes. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and glove up, and I'm just gonna wash this rice. We're gonna wash it until it is completely, completely clear, okay? But yes, no, absolutely, food YouTube is just like that. How am I so energetic? Jay, I am talking about my favorite subject in the world. I get to talk about food, well, and I'm trying to make it that way for a living. And also, Vyvanse, 20 milligrams of it. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it, the lingo, it's all about profitability. It's all about making money at the end of the day and whatever is the most advertising friendly thing imaginable. They just have to be brand safe. The goal of all things in capitalism is not for it to be a good product, it's for things to become profitable, okay? And mainstream cooking media is one of the biggest examples of this. Um, so Boris, I used to be actually quite critical of Adam Ragusia. There's actually a couple of videos of his that I really like. I do like it when he goes and he interviews other experts. Um, and it's just like sort of like beyond him actually cooking something. That's the kind of content of his that I've actually come to enjoy quite a bit. And I am a little bit critical of his actual like cooking, cooking videos. I do really like his journalism and his interviewing ability. So again, I'm just washing up the rice. I'm getting it to be nice and clear, my friends. Okay. Agitating it, letting it go. And again, I want to emphasize with the legs, you can't really overcook them. The goal with the legs and what we're doing to them is just to get them really nice and tender. The only thing is we don't want them to become fall apart tender. Okay, we want them to still have a little bit of bite to them. If it falls apart, it's just going to be a little bit messy. It's not going to give us like that juicy, you know, bite of poached chicken that I'm at least really, really looking for in uh, chicken rice. 
Oof, I am really running out of space behind me today. Wow. This kitchen's getting a little bit cramped. It's getting a little bit crowded today. Okay, my rice is now washed and I'm going to show you all my beautiful washed rice in just a moment. Excellent. So, also hello Bad Sniper. Hope you're having a good day today. I'm gonna show you something. This is the rice. I have it sitting over the strainer because again, I don't want this to absorb any of the extra liquid. I want this to absorb as much of the chicken stock as possible. So we wash it thoroughly. We got rid of all the excess starch and dirt on the outside of the rice. And now we're basically just going to let it sit like this until we're ready to use it. I'm gonna just dump out this liquid just to make sure that that liquid's not really hitting the bottom of the rice. Okay, this is a very, very important step if you're doing a seasoned or a flavored rice like this. If you were just to cook your rice in water, this is not a necessary step by any means. I think it is extremely important for something like this. Okay. So, we just have a couple more minutes left on the uh, chicken itself. I'm gonna head back to the stove, my friends. Head back to the stove really quickly. And we're going to go ahead and give it a little peek. The kitchen timer is about to go off. Okay, and again, it's just gently, 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 gently cooking away. Using the tongs here was actually a bit of a bad move, I think. I ended up tearing the skin a little bit. I think that's a fully cooked uh, chicken leg, but the only thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to check it with my trusty probe thermometer, my friends. Okay, we're going to go into the thickest part of the leg. We're going to give it a little check. We wanna make sure um, that it is fully cooked through, 160. We're looking for about 160 internal. So, I'm gonna do my best. I'm gonna tr going to try to gently grab a leg without tearing the skin, although that could be a challenge. And we're going to go in between the leg and the thigh. And what are we getting? Oh, a still a little bit cold, it looks like. We're still around 150. We're still around 150. So, you know what that tells me? We're just going to have to cook it some more. I'm going to go back in here. And we don't want it to touch the bone. We just wanna go into the thickest part of the meat. I'm going to try that again. That one's looking at more 171. So you know what I'm gonna do for my own sake and my own sanity? We're going to cook this for maybe about five more minutes. Again, you can't really overcook this until it falls apart, okay? So I'm going to turn up the heat slightly because it has stopped simmering completely. I want it still at a very, very gentle simmer. I'm going to continue to baste the top of it. And we're going to give it a little cover. We're going to slap a lid on it. Okay. Ah, just put a few things away. Excellent. Slap a lid and five more minutes. Where did I put my lid? Aha, found it. Sweet. Everybody doing good? Everybody following along nicely? Five more minutes. And then we'll pull out the legs and we'll give them the same exact treatment as the breasts. We'll, we will shock them in some cold water. We'll shock them in some cold water and um, we'll paint them with sesame oil. And that's going to be it for the cooking of the chicken. But remember, chicken rice is all about the rice. It's all about the sauces as well. It's about just making sure you have a nicely cooked piece of chicken, but everything else is going to be the main flavoring component for it, okay? So you have to give everything else a lot of love. You have to give everything else a lot of affection, okay? My kitchen is just getting a little bit crowded. A lot going on here at once. He really likes it so far. I'm glad he likes it so far, Kaze. Today's a little bit messy. Today's a little bit more of an experimental stream. I haven't actually really made a chicken rice like this on stream before, but you know, first time for everything. It's a nicely cooked piece of chicken. Okay, sweet. I'm trying to think. What else do we have going on here? Which stream is not, a, uh, was the stream not an experimental stream? Keeper? Sometimes I do like dishes that I've like done before on stream. Um, I'm just like getting used to the workflow of this one because we have a lot of moving parts uh, involved with this one especially. Right? There's a lot actively going on here. Okay, so let's talk about what else we need to get done. 
We need to do a little bit of prep. We need to do a little bit of prep for specifically the sauces and for the rice. Because what I wanted to do, above all else, I wanted to finish the rice with some freshly sliced scallion and some freshly sliced coriander, okay? So for everything, we're going to need all of the scallion. Let's go ahead and prep that up right now. My friends, let's separate the greens and the whites. Okay. Separate them because we're gonna treat them slightly differently. Beautiful. Okay, the whites, we're just going to do a very, very fine little slice into rings like so. And then the greens, we're going to chop them into some very pretty blades. So we're just going ahead, we're slicing through this entire batch, we're getting all these lovely little coins, okay? All these beautiful little coins going all the way through. And we have about three minutes left on the chicken, so keep that in mind. Keep it in mind, my friends. So the scallions, we're going to be making this like chili garlic sauce that's going to feature the scallions. Okay, and we're also going to be uh, finishing the rice with this. Keepers, we've always had a multi cow. Okay, but I'll show you what's happening in the pot in just a second. I just wanted to keep the lid on just to make sure that the chicken legs could finish cooking. Lovely. Excellent. And now I'm just going to go ahead and push all that to the side. Beautiful. And now, actually before I push that to the side, I'm just gonna grab my bench scraper, my handy dandy little bench scraper as always. Take the whole thing, pick it up, and put it onto the plate. Beautiful. Okay. Oh boys, I got some serious problems with Mr. Gordon Ramsay. Specifically, and that he's not particularly knowledgeable about the things that he makes and he oftentimes just spouts completely incorrect information. Okay, but we're going to go ahead and go through this batch of scallions. We're going to get these nice, big, beautiful uh, blades of these greens, right? And this is mostly for like aesthetic reasons because I feel like these aggressive blades just look super, super pretty. Right, and the whites, we want them like very finely sliced because they're a little bit more intense. They're a little bit more harsh and the greens are a little bit softer and it's fun to get like such uh, pretty blades out of them. Okay. Um, so yeah, Dolingo, you can theoretically use the back of a knife. It'll be fine if you use the back of a knife. It's just nice to have a dedicated tool to do that, especially because uh, the back of the knife is a little bit curved. So you can't get like an exact like scrape that is uh, level with your cutting board. Okay, I'm throwing that onto the plate. And guess what? The legs are just about to be done. I'm going to set up this next painting station over here. Okay, and again, the beauty of cooking the legs and the breast separately is that we're able to really, really, really control the cook on them and get them to be at the perfect stage. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and grab this leg ever so gently and plunge it into my ice water. I'm gonna grab this other leg. I'm gonna grab the whole thing. And I'm gonna plunge it into my ice bath. Lovely. My skin there is a little bit, uh, it's not as pretty as it was before, but that's okay. And now we can shut off the heat. We don't want this to reduce anymore. We're going to taste the cooking liquid. And uh, oh, Moonha, I did that just to see like the cocana and just to taste it. And it's really, really juicy. It's really, really tender. It's a very, very lovely breast. And you can see, by the way, it's not drying out because it was painted with the sesame oil. The painting of the sesame oil is one of the most essential components. Okay. And now we've plunged the chicken into the uh, ice bath once again. We're just gonna let it sit and cool down for just a moment. And then we're going to take it out. We're going to dry it off. Okay. Take it out, dry it off, and finish up the processing on it. 
Um, Jack, you've asked me, is it better to cook with skill or with book? Like if I know how to cook a steak, is it still necessary to use a tool to check it? So Jack, it depends on the kind of steak that you're doing. For me, really, really thick steaks, always a thermometer. If it's a thin steak, like a skirt steak, uh, there's plenty of intuition and you can get like very inconsistent readings using a thermometer. So I think for a thick steak, it's best to use a thermometer. Unless you've cooked the steak of the same thickness over and over on your cooktop, that you get a sense of the timing, okay? It, it, you basically have to repeat something enough times until you build up a sense of intuition. So, guess what? The chicken legs have now fully been cooled off. We plunge them into the ice water. We're going to get all that ice water off of them. Okay. And so the skin on the legs actually isn't as pretty, right? It ended up picking up like some of the muck from the stock, but that's okay. Only thing I'm going to do now, my friends, we're going to take it and we're gonna pat it dry. How important is making mistakes when learning how to cook? Kaze, making mistakes is only useful if you learn how to troubleshoot them. So everything that we're doing when I'm cooking, I'm always analyzing what happened, what went wrong here, and I try to think about ways to improve upon it. So making mistakes is useful if you know what to do afterwards. Okay. So we're just patting this whole thing nice and dry. These are the chicken legs. And my friends, same exact deal, same deal. Once we patted it dry, we're going to go ahead and get a bit of sesame oil, just a little drop and just a little drop. And that's just going to keep the whole thing nice and shiny, nice and delicious and stop my leg skin from drying out, okay? And again, the goal of this chicken, it's not gonna be hot when we eat it, but everything else is going to be naturally hot. This was perfectly cooked though, beautiful. I know it doesn't look that pretty, I know it doesn't look that beautiful, but I'm telling you, it's going to be really, really excellent. So, I can put my brush away. I have no more use for sesame oil. That has now done its job. Everybody, please, in chat, say thank you, Mr. Sesame Oil, for your hard work. Thank you, Sesame Oil. Please, he did a really good job for us. He's stopping our skin from drying out and getting unpleasant, okay? It's such a small thing, but you'd be surprised at how important of a step this actually is, okay? So I'm gonna take this chicken and I'm gonna set this behind me. All right, thank you, Serena. I'm setting this behind me, beautiful. And now the other thing we're going to do is we're going to strain out all of our beautiful broth, okay? We're going to strain that out into a separate little pot that we have already set up. So let's head to the stove. Ooh, that's messing up a little bit. Let's head to the stove. So this is a homemade chicken stock cooked with the cilantro, cooked with the shallots, cooked with the scallion, cooked with the soy sauce. It's really, really delicious stuff. The only thing we're going to do is we're just going to strain it through uh, something else into a separate pot. And we're doing that. We're doing that to get rid of all the solids that we want nothing to do with. Okay, I no longer need that pot. I'm gonna take this, transfer this over here. Lovely. Take this. Take this back over here. Excellent. Okay. The rice has essentially fully strained now. I can go ahead and put that into a bowl until I'm ready to cook with it. Okay. And then into this pot is gonna go all of my beautiful stock. We can ladle this if we really want to, but I think I'm just gonna pour it. You guys think it's gonna go fine if I pour it? I think it's gonna be fine. As long as we pour fast, it should be, eh, it'll be okay. All right, let's go. Ooh, those handles are hot. Let's go fast. Yep, that was hot. Okay, and now my friends, we're gonna get rid of all of these solids. We have no more use for them. It's all garbage. And inside, inside of this, we're left with this really delicious homemade stock. Really, really delicious. I know you guys can't see it too well. I'm gonna taste it. We're probably going to need to dilute it though, because I think it's going to be a little too concentrated. So I'm gonna taste this right now. Mm. Mm. You know what? That's super, super delicious. That's really, really good. 
I think for my purposes today, it's a little too concentrated. It's a little too salty. Mm, that's a good stock. Oh my God. Guys, that is salty. That has oomph. It's aromatic. That's one of the best stocks I've ever made. Hands down. That's pretty awesome sauce. And I don't say awesome sauce lightly. I do not say that lightly at all. Wow. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna have another sip of this. You know what? I've already decided we're not diluting it. We will not be diluting it. That is a really delicious stock. Everybody, little recap session. So, we've done all of the prep for the chicken. We poached the chicken really, really gently in the liquid. We had some homemade chicken broth, some coriander, some white pepper, some soy sauce, some Shaoxing wine. Okay. We had some shallots, some ginger, some garlic, and some scallions. And we poached the breast and the leg separately. We took them out, shocked it in water, and painted it with some sesame oil. And now we're left with that beautiful, rich, delicious homemade chicken broth. We chopped up some shallots, some garlic, uh, and some ginger. And what we're going to do is we're going to fry that off in some of the chicken fat that we have set aside. We're going to fry that off, and then we're going to add the rice and cook it in the chicken broth. It's going to be really, really delicious. Okay? In the meantime, while all of that is going, I'm going to just clean up my station just a touch. Does anybody have any questions about the process so far? This is a fairly, you know, I wouldn't say complex. There's just a lot of moving parts to today's dish. Does anybody have any questions? Yes, awesome sauce goes great on chicken breast. That's a good question. What are the next steps? So Moonha, that's a really good question. We're going to start by frying off the shallots, the garlic, and the ginger that we've set aside. And we're gonna do that in some of the chicken fat. So let's head to the stove. Okay, I'm gonna get this ugly little guy out of the way. He's already done a good job for us. Everybody say thank you to the Dutch oven. He's done great, okay. We're gonna get him out of sight and out of mind. What is this fancy food talk? You've joined a cooking stream. You've joined the best cooking show on Twitch, okay. In fact, I'm actually just gonna set him next to me so he's a little bit off the camera. Ah, perfect. And we're just letting that cool off and then I'm going to go ahead and clean this up later. So this is where the rice is gonna be happening. It might get a little overfilled actually now that I'm looking at it. I'm considering doing that. No, guys. Is the rice pot gonna overfill? Yes, it will. Okay, we're gonna do a little switcheroo. We're gonna do a last second switcheroo. We're actually going to pour the stock into this saucepan. And we're going to wipe this off. Oh yeah, really, really delicious. And we're going to do the rice uh, in that other one. Okay? So I'm gonna grab a paper towel. We're gonna grab a paper towel, we're gonna wipe it off because again, I don't want this thing to overflow. We're gonna get rid of any of that excess liquid. And then we set aside all of that beautiful chicken fat. Don't forget about the chicken fat. This chicken fat is going directly inside, okay? It's going directly inside and now we're heating it up. We're gonna get this chicken fat nice and hot, my friends. And the goal now is essentially to fry the shallots, to fry the garlic, to fry the ginger. And how much do the ingredients cost? Oh, keepers, I don't know. I mean, typically for each stream, my stream total cost is around $20 per stream. Some streams cost 30, some streams cost 10. So this one, I'm using leftover ingredients. Today, shopping, maybe around $25 for today in total, but that's only if I like had to guess. So we're heating up the chicken fat in this pot right now. It's gonna pop, it's gonna hiss because it's a little bit wet in there still. And we're going to fry the shallots, we're gonna fry the garlic, we're gonna fry the ginger. We're gonna add in the rice and then add in all of that beautiful stock that we have set aside, okay? And then we're gonna cook it down and it's going to be really, really incredible. It's gonna be really, really delicious. Are you excited? I'm excited for it personally. So it's hissing, it's, it's going. Give it a second, be patient with it. Be patient. So it's hissing, it's popping. It was a little bit wet in there. It's fine, it happens to the best of us, okay? I'm just going to go in now. This is my garlic, this is my shallot, and this is my ginger, okay? 
it's just pop that mean. It sprayed all oil all over the place. It happens to the best of us. Let's get it in there, and we're gonna get frying. Beautiful. Get a little spoon and get this going. And my friends, if you could smell this, if you could smell the garlic and the ginger and the shallots all frying together, you would understand how magical this is. It's such a simple thing. It's such a simple thing. The garlic, the ginger, the shallots, it's all going together. Beautiful. And this I'm going to just keep, ah, maybe I'm not gonna keep it there. And now the goal, we're going to get some good color developed on this. You don't wanna walk away from this too much. The shallots, the garlic, and the ginger, each of these are susceptible to burning at any given moment. So you wanna basically keep the stone, you wanna keep this going. And it's taking in all of that lovely chicken fat. Yes, I'm gonna have some, I'm gonna have some water. I'm gonna have a little bit of water. Mm. Beautiful. I know you guys can't see it too well, but it's getting really aromatic right now. It's getting nicely browned. It smells excellent at the moment. So we're just trying to get a bit of color. We're just trying to cook out some of the liquid. And again, frying in that naturally occurring chicken fat. We're just making the most of what we have, my friends. We're making the most of what we have here. We're not using any external vegetable oil. The beauty of a dish like chicken rice is that you're using all of your byproducts. You're using your chicken fat byproduct. You're using your chicken broth byproduct. Everything is just flowing back into itself. And it's really, really special that way, okay? It really is special that way. That's what I love about this. It's all encompassing. It's a holistic dish in a way. So we're keeping it going, we're keeping it frying, we're moving it around, we're making sure that the garlic doesn't burn, we're making sure that the ginger doesn't burn, the shallots don't burn. Okay, we just want some color developed. And then we'll go in with the rice and we'll go in with the stock. Where is my pot lid? Okay, I suppose that will do. That pot lid will do for today. So keeping it going a little bit longer. Just keep pushing it. We don't want to squelch anything. This is just the base of the flavor for the rice. A little bit longer, my friends, a little bit longer. Um, no, uh, that's actually fairly normal uh, as an old. So, a lot of people, they do cook the chicken rice in a rice cooker. I do all of my chicken rices in a saucepan or in a pot because I am able to do so. I am capable, okay? I'm able to do so because I'm able to get perfect rice every single time in a saucepan or in a pot. Okay, this is where we stop. That's enough color. I don't want to push this any further. I don't want any burnt garlic. I don't want any burnt ginger. I don't want anything like that. We're going to go in with the rice. We're not really looking to toast the rice. All we want to do now, before we add the liquid and before the rice gets mushy, we want to mix in all of the fat. We want to mix in all of the shallots. We want it to be evenly distributed through the rice and not just stuck on the bottom, okay? So the rice that we washed, that we strained out, beautiful. We're just mixing through the shallots. We're mixing through the garlic, the fat, the ginger, okay? And now we're going to ladle in some of that lovely stock. This is the high grill rice that we're using again, okay? Not white rice, not brown rice, but somewhere in between. So we're ladling it in, we're ladling it in, and we just want a little bit over the top of the rice. Just a little bit, maybe a little bit more water. Something like that, perfect. Eh, a drop more. Okay, there it is. My friends, to make perfect stovetop rice, we don't want to stir it. We don't want to move it around. And we don't want to add too much water. Add too much water and your rice gets gummy. Add too little, it's going to be too granular. All we have to do is bring this to a boil. Just bring this to a boil, drop to a simmer, and cook it for about 20 minutes or so. Really, really simple. Okay? This rice, it's so flavorful. We made this delicious homemade chicken stock that it's now filled with, that it's now fully saturated with. That's going to give us the best possible chicken rice. It's cooked in the chicken fat, it's cooked with the shallots. This is not just a plain white rice, my friends. 
Also, do I believe in one-pot meals, Dolingo? Yes, if I feel like I'm not sacrificing any techniques. I feel like the issue with a lot of one-pot meals for me is that it feels like you're sacrificing flavor and you're sacrificing technique all for the sake of just making it in one pot. There are some dishes that are suited to it, but typically the more ingredients you have going into it, the less they all uh, really like to be just boiled. Because that's what happens in a one pot meal. Everything essentially gets boiled. Okay, so it's now simmering away really, really nicely. In fact, I think I got too much water. I'm just gonna get a couple splashes of that out. Last second, while I can. I'm analyzing it now and I'm like, yeah, this is definitely a little too wet for my tastes. I don't want this rice to become gummy. Okay. I really don't want it to become gummy. So that should be the perfect amount. Now, now we're going to go ahead and slap a lid on this bad boy and we're gonna cook this whole thing for about 20 minutes. And how many people does this feed? It's two chicken breasts, it's two chicken legs. This is maybe four hungry people. It can feed up to six probably. So my friends, all we need to do, we just put a lid on it and we cook this for about 20 minutes. That's all that we have to do. Low heat, bring to a boil, drop to a simmer, bring to a boil, drop to a simmer. 20 minutes and we're going to have some really, really beautiful rice. Okay, it's gonna be aromatic, it's gonna be flavorful. So, once again, everybody, I'm gonna show you my chicken. Again, not particularly appealing yet. This is essentially just gently poached chicken. This is just gently, gently poached chicken, but we covered it with sesame oil. And you're going to see how delicious it's going to be once we get the chili garlic sauce. Okay? Lovely. We're going to do chili garlic sauce and we're also going to do a dark soy sauce. It's going to be really, really lovely. Beautiful. So, I want to emphasize once again, everybody, this is the kind of a dish that you just have to trust the process for. It has become a very recent thing for people to hate boiled food. They say, oh, it's boiled bland chicken. I promise you, with the sauce, with the broth, it's going to be very delicious. The beauty of boiling it, or in our case, just gently poaching it, is that it isn't overpowering. It's very delicate. It's really, really delicate. Okay. So, now let's think about the sauces. We have two sauces to make. We're gonna make a dark soy sauce, and we also have to do a chili garlic sauce. The soy sauce I'm gonna do right now, I'm gonna show you all how easy this is, okay? So I have this cute little condiment bowl. I'm going to fill this up. A couple big spoons of dark soy sauce, nice and easy. I'm going to do a couple of splashes of sesame oil. Sesame oil was not finished quite yet. Some delicious toasted sesame seed oil. Just a splash, not too much, okay? And then, and then here's the real special component of the sauce. This is the special component of the sauce, my friends. We're going to add in about half a ladle of the homemade chicken stock. We're going to do some of the homemade chicken stock right in here. Okay? A little bit more, perhaps. And then, I don't typically do this. You guys have seen how little I use sugar in this channel. This is one of the only times that you'll ever see me actually cook with sugar. In fact, I cook with sugar so little that I have to like dig it out of my pantry. I almost never add sugar to things. However, for the sauce, I do think it's pretty important. Uh, what controversial sweet soy sauce, Munha? I'm not sure what you're talking about. Okay, and then we're doing, we're doing just a little bit of sugar, just like this, whatever this amount is, okay? You hate soy sauce, Pimu? It is essential, you can't hate soy sauce. There's so many different kinds and it's cooked in so many different ways. Okay, so dark soy sauce, nice and fermented. Some of the homemade chicken broth, some of the sesame oil, and a little pinch of sugar. Let's taste it. Mm. Oh, everybody, let me tell you right now, that sauce was so simple to throw together, and yet it's so flavorful. Well, Pimu, it is supposed to be uh, really, really salty. It is supposed to be really, really salty, um, because it's not really supposed to just be eaten kind of as is, unless you're like dipping it for like sushi or something. I feel like that's most people's association with soy sauce being too salty. But in like other dishes and other sauces, it's not too salty at all, right? Also consider the light soy sauce uh, instead. Is there a veggie version of this dish? Jay, I actually don't think that's possible. This might be one of the things that you can't really have a veggie version of because it requires chicken fat and chicken broth and chicken. I feel like at that point you're doing like a completely different dish. But my friends, this is the easiest sauce to throw together. Some dark soy sauce, a little pinch of sugar, okay? 
and then some of the broth that we made. Mm. That sauce is so good. That sauce is so good. That is delicious. Okay. Also, thank you so much to, oh my God, to Mino56 for the raid. Whoa, that's a lot of people. Welcome. Welcome in everybody. Hi, hello. Welcome to the stream. Let's do a little introduction. Let's do a little recap session. Oh my God, everybody is so quiet. Nobody's chat. I think I, because I have my chat to follow these only or something. I don't know what it is. Hello, welcome in everybody. You like food and drink? Happy to have you. So, this is a cooking show. Welcome to the cooking show. We're making some chicken rice today. We're making some chicken rice. Uh, currently we have going the rice on the stove. Ow, I just burnt myself slightly. You can speak English, great. Lovely to have you. I'm currently on the stove. I have my rice going through the to chicken rice today. So I made this really, really beautiful homemade chicken stock using dark soy sauce, the Shaoxing wine. Okay, some garlic, some ginger, and we poached some chicken legs in there. We poached some chicken legs, we poached some chicken breasts. We took it out, uh, shocked it in some cold water and painted it with some sesame oil. Okay, also, 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 uh, in the meantime, we were working on a little sauce. Let me show you the sauce. Look at this bad boy. Some dark soy sauce, some of the chicken broth, okay? And some sesame oil. And next we're going to work on some of the other components. We're going to make a chili garlic sauce and it's going to be really, really delicious. So, my friends, for the chili garlic sauce, I have some lovely bird's eye chilies. We're going to use about six of these. So Mino, it's lovely to have you. We're going to have about six bird's eye chilies. I'm not going to use the other ones. And we're gonna keep the seeds intact. We're gonna keep them inside. Only thing I am going to do, I am going to glove up. I am going to glove up through this because I don't really wanna hurt myself. I don't wanna to touch myself in the eye or anything afterwards. Okay. So we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna just cut the heads off of all of these chilies. All right, nice and easy. Just snip them off. And we're gonna keep the seeds inside. Also, hello to Gabby. Yeah, yeah, we just got raided. Welcome in. It's lovely to have you. So, we're just cutting the heads off and we're keeping the seeds inside because we want all of that lovely heat from the chilies. Okay. And we're just gonna go through this, my friends, and we're going to go ahead and just slice it up. We're going to slice it up nice and fine. The seeds do tend to kind of explode all over the place when you do this, though. So, you can make the sauce in a blender. I much prefer like a hand chopped one. Also lovely to have you. I much, much prefer having a hand chopped one. Okay. I like the coarseness, I like the roughness of the texture. Traditionally, you would kind of like pound this in a mortar and pestle. And yes, we will be using the seeds. I want a very, very spicy sauce. I do talk fast. I want a really, really spicy sauce, my friends. And yes, it is mostly the pith, uh, as an all, absolutely. It is mostly the pith and it's mostly the seeds inside of the chili that contribute to its heat and spiciness. Okay, and now, all I'm going to do, I wanna get a nice fine chop on it. We're just going to go through this one or two times. Now, traditionally, once again, you would do this in like a mortar and pestle. I don't have a mortar and pestle. So instead, my knife is gonna do just fine for us today. I probably should have done this last because we're gonna still slice some garnishes for today, uh, but that's okay. Um, okay, we're going to go through this just a couple more times. Get a pretty fine mince on this. Punch it? I'm not gonna punch it. I don't think I'm gonna do that. I want like a very like chunky, very, very coarse, very rustic soy garlic sauce here. Or uh, chili garlic sauce, excuse me. Okay, that should be good. I don't think we want any more than that. I'm going to go ahead and grab a little bowl through this. We're going to need a slightly bigger bowl through this today. Grab that. This is going to be an incredibly spicy sauce. This is the kind of thing that you want to be fairly sparing with, okay? So, some of that goes inside. Next step, we're going to go back to the microplane, and we have this little thing of ginger. We have this little bad boy of the ginger. We're going to go ahead and grate that right in over the microplane, okay? Get it in there. Get it all the way in there. Get it all the way inside. It's gonna be delicious. And 
all the while, by the way, the guys is still going. The guys has about 12 minutes left on it. Okay. It's soaking up all the delicious chicken stock. Keep it going. Does anybody have any questions as far? Does anybody have any questions about what we're doing here? We're basically on the final step. All we have to do is just prepare the garnishes and prepare the sauces for the chicken rice today. I do wish I had a mortar and pestle like that I would use for like wet things because my mortar and pestle is mostly for dry things. Because like you would like really want to like pound this. Um, strawberry or grape jam? I haven't had strawberry jam in quite some time. I'd say probably grape. Uh, what? Do people make grape jam? I definitely had a strawberry jam. Okay. And we're just about done. Okay, we're still gonna keep this microplane because we're gonna do some garlic with it as well in just a second. We're only going to need, because this is a raw sauce, the garlic is going to be super, super intense. We only really need just one clove. We just need one clove of garlic for this, okay? Also, my heat on the rice could be a little bit lower, I think. Um, this is, yeah, so, so we'll see what the final texture of it is going to be. It's, it might be a little bit more like a salsa than anything, but you'll see what we do. Okay. Let's go ahead and peel up this other garlic loaf. And we're also gonna go ahead and grate that bad boy in. So I just wanted something really nice and spicy, something really nice and delicious. Okay. Get the garlic inside. But yeah, um, traditionally this would be like a little bit more of like a dipping sauce or like a pouring sauce. I just don't have like the tool to like really, really smash this all into place. Okay. Almost done with all the garlic, nice and pungent. Gonna have quite a bit of oomph to it. Excellent. And now let's go ahead and grab a little spoon. Let's grab a little spoon. And the spoon, we're just going to get uh, everything else out of the microplane. Also, welcome on in, Stewie. Hello, hello. Okay, that should be it for the microplane. We've used it up for everything that we need today. Yeah, there's nothing really exciting going on with the pod cam at the moment, is there, Muna? So that's why it looks kind of funny, I think. Okay, look at that. Just get it all off. And this we no longer need for anything else today. This has done its job. Everybody please say thank you to the microplane. It's done really, really good for us. Also, thank you so much, Elim, for one of the five gifted subs. Whoa, I just walked away. Thank you, thank you. That was very sweet of you. Okay, so take a look. This has right now the garlic, this has the ginger, and this also has the chilies. Also on my cutting board is essentially a bunch of chilies because we chopped it up. I should have done that last, but that's okay. Um, okay, next, we're going to need some lime juice. We're going to do some lime juice in here. Also, Pumu, that's a lot of details. That's, that's quite a few details. So, let's go ahead and grab this bad boy. I finally have an excuse to use my new citrus juicer. Look at this. Also, thank you so much, Death Owl, for the sub. Thank you, thank you, that's very sweet of you. So, take a look. We're going to go ahead and pop this facing down. Also, do we have a hype train going? Is that what's going on? Ooh. So we're gonna have this facing down, I believe. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to squeeze the heck out of it. That's how it goes, doesn't it? Ugh. Squeeze it. And then, once this is squeezed, because you wanna do it facing down. You wanna do it facing down. It's the number one mistake. People, when they use these, they have it facing up. That's not what you want. You want it facing down so it presses all the juice out. And then we're going to pull all of that lime juice that we've just extracted right inside. Beautiful. And the lime juice is going to really, really help to temper the bite. Also, oh my God, Liam. Thank you so much for the 10 gifted subs. Whoa, that was very sweet of you. Thank you, thank you. Ugh, get all that lime juice in there, my friends. Guys, I am so glad that I finally own one of these. Liam, this is very sweet of you. Thank you so much. Look at that. The lime juice is gonna do a really good job of tempering some of 
the garlic and to stop it from being super, super pungent. Okay, it's basically going to cook it a little bit. Excellent. Okay, I don't need this lime anymore. Um, and I don't think it's a placebo effect at all. It's just very, very efficient. You can see how destroyed this lime is. Look at this thing. This thing has been juiced into infinity, okay? And Sky, thank you so much for the gift itself. Oh my God, I love you so sweet today. We have a level five hype train. It's pretty crazy. It is a lot easier on the hands, absolutely. Okay, I'm not gonna taste this yet. We're still not done. We're going to add, remember my scallions, my chopped green onions? We're going to add a nice little handful of those scallions right inside. Okay. We're just going to mash it all up. Again, I don't have a mortar and pestle. You would typically want to crush something like this, but that's why we finally chopped it, okay? We're basically just chopping it up with a spoon. Not a mortar and pestle, not crushing it the way that I would have liked to, but that's okay. Ah, oh, lovely. Chili and garlic and scallions. Beautiful, thank you so much, guys. It's lovely to have you. Everybody, we're basically done. We have so little left to do. We're almost done with everything. The rice at the moment has about five minutes left in it. The mix of the colors is pretty awesome, isn't it? Oh, Dosky. Whoa. You guys are being crazy today. Thank you so much. You guys are all being so sweet. We're almost done. Last step is just going to be a little bit of coriander, a little bit more fresh cilantro. We're going to have going on the inside. And the cilantro, we're going to have some... Um, we're going to have some of the cilantro going both into the rice and into this little sauce. It's basically like a salsa. It's essentially like a salsa at this point, which is funny to think about. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Oh no, Iliam, did you? Oh no. I see what happened. Okay, everybody, you don't have to take off the stems. I like to take off the stems for texture reasons. I don't like the texture of the stems. I find them a little bit too fibrous. So we're just going to go through and we're going to pluck off all the leaves off the cilantro Okay. We have about four minutes left on the pot. Okay, four minutes left on the rice, my friends. So things are moving fast. And this is the last thing. We timed everything perfectly. We really, really did. I'm very proud of myself today. We should have a stem coffee pasta. Yeah, just exclamation mark stem, exclamation mark cilantro. That would be pretty good. Also, Sky. How many did you just give? Two more? <laughs> you guys are just battling it out. Sky, thank you so much for the two gifted subs. Thank you, thank you. Okay, my friends, so take a look. We have all this lovely little cilantro right here. Okay, and all that we need to do, all that we need to do, we're just going to go ahead and we're going to slice it up nice and fine. Take it, bundle it up in your hands. I'm getting all of the chili all over my hands and eventually I'm gonna to touch my eyes and forget about it completely, but that's okay. Take it and we're just going to slice this bad boy up. Slice it, don't chop it. You wanna slice it, my friends. Okay, it's really, really important that you slice it. If you slice it, you're able to get it nice and fine without crushing it, without bruising it. If you chop it, you're going to cleave it up like an ax. Okay. Thank you. You're all being very sweet to me today. I appreciate all of you. <sighs> Thank you so much to Anonymous Gifty for the gifted sub to uh, Gwen Avery. Thank you. Thank you. You guys are going crazy today. You guys are going nuts. We're just slicing it up. We're getting this cilantro nice and fine. Okay. And now some of this, not too much of it. We want some of it to go into this little uh, sauce that we're making, this chili garlic sauce. It's basically like a salsa. Now that I'm thinking about it with like the lime juice and the chilies and the garlic in there and also the ginger. Really, really beautiful. Look at that sauce. I ended up combining salsa and sauce in my mind. You could blend this up if you really wanted to. I'm just going to keep it as it is. We're just going to have it as is. It'll be great. Okay, and then the rest of this, the rest of this is going to go into the rice itself. Look at that, beautiful. 
So, the scallions, that's going to go into the rice. The coriander is going to go into the rice. We're going to fold it up. The rice has about two minutes left on it. Two minutes, and then it's just going to steam through. So, everybody, take a look. I want you all to take a look right now. Ah, I ended up dropping something. Oops. Look at this. My beautiful soy sauce. My sesame oil, my soy sauce. This is my chili garlic sauce. Basically like a chili garlic relish or salsa. It's a little bit chunky, it's a little bit coarse, but that's okay too. I don't mind it being like that. Okay, and my rice is just about done. It's just about ready. So we're going to go ahead and turn off the heat. We're gonna turn off the timer. Everybody, let's go ahead and look at the rice. Is everybody ready? I wanna hear a nice resounding yes chef from everybody watching. Oh, lovely. We have a beautiful pot of rice, and now we're just adding in the cilantro. We're adding in some of the delicious fresh scallions, our fresh scallion greens. And we're going to take our spoon, and we're going to mix all of this up together. All of our delicious chicken rice, cooked in the chicken fat, cooked with the shallots, cooked with the garlic, and cooked with the ginger, cooked in a homemade chicken broth. Beautiful. Just mix it through, mix it through. Excellent. That's exactly what I'm looking for. I'm gonna give it a little taste. Mmm. Mmm. Super good. That is lovely. That is a lovely thing of rice. Okay, we're gonna slap a lid on it. Last thing we have to do. Last thing we have to do, my friends. We're going to let it steam for a second. We're gonna let it steam. And now, it's time for us to build the plate. Is everybody ready? Last step is going to be the garnish. So, for the garnish, I'm going to take some cucumber. We're going to cut off either end. I want to hear, yes, chef, please and thank you. I asked if we're ready, if we're following along. We're going to cut off one ugly piece of it. That's fine. Oh. Okay. Oh, man, that was spicy because of the chili. It happened. Just nicely washed cucumber. And we're getting some nice thin slices, okay? Ah, that one's a little too thin. Okay. Okay, there we go. We have a little thing of all of these cucumbers. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and put this cucumber behind me. I'm going to now start assembling the plate. It's going to be a really, really gorgeous plate. Let's go ahead and get this away from me. Thank you all for all those subs, by the way. That was all really, really sweet of all of you. Okay. I'm gonna wipe down my station. I'm gonna wipe it down. And then we're going to start building our beautiful plate. Is everybody ready for this? This is the final stages. Actually, no, wait, I forgot to do the chicken. <gasps> I still need my cutting board. Oh no, I forgot one thing. I'm gonna take these cucumbers off. I forgot to slice up my chicken. This is a tragedy. Okay. So, the chicken. We're just going to cut this into gentle little slices. Nice and thick though. Beautiful. Okay. I forgot to do this. This was a very important step. We did need to slice this. Excellent. Look at that. That's exactly what I want to see. Okay. And the tip, I'm gonna have as a little snack. Mm. So, remember, we painted the skin of it with the sesame oil so it wouldn't dry out. Move that aside. And now, we have to do the leg. The leg, you can just pop the bone out if you really want to. All I'm going to do though, is I'm just going to essentially just cut it in half. It's a little bit more difficult to do when it's already cooked though, because I have to like look through the separation manually. Ah, where is the separation? Where do those two bones collide? There it is, okay. 
And this, I'm just going to leave in my plate as is. So my friends, again, I want you to understand, this chicken is not particularly exciting in its current state. It's not particularly exciting, but you'll see how exciting it's going to become. Okay, we're going to make a plate of this now. This I can now properly set it all aside. I can take this, I can put this behind me. I know it's not particularly appealing yet, but you'll see how pretty it's all gonna become. Okay, so first step, we're going to take a big beautiful plate. That's the first step. Next, we're going to take our rice. Ooh, excellent. Oh no, did I leave the heat on? I left the heat on the whole time. Oh, that's so funny. Okay, it's fine. It's just a little squirched on the bottom. It is okay though. So, we're going to take a little bit of my chicken rice. That's a bit of a tragedy, isn't it? Happens to the best of us. Okay. So, this is the chicken rice. It's cooked in the chicken stock, it's really, really perfect. We're going to take it, and we're going to flip it over. Okay? We take it and we flip it over. Then, we're going to go ahead and garnish it with some of these scallions still just on top. Okay? Lovely. Next, we're going to take our chicken. And again, I need you to hold with me. I need you to stay with me here. We're going to take our chicken and we're going to put it on one side. This is the breast. And then this mm, is my leg. And this is my thigh. Okay, hold on. I need you to stay with me. We're gonna have a little bit of cucumber on this. Just a little bit of cucumber. We're going to just nestle that in somewhere, wherever we feel like there's enough space. Okay. We stay, I need you all to stay with me. Next, we're going to splash some soy sauce directly on top of this. Where's my soy sauce that I made? Perfect. This is the soy sauce with the sesame oil. Take some of this bad boy and just over the top. Just paint it with some of that lovely sauce. That soy sauce. A little bit of sugar and the homemade broth. Okay, it's not actually a very pretty plate, but that's okay. It's gonna be super, super flavorful at the end of the day. Mm. It's really, really del delicious though. Okay, and then we're going to get two little ramekins. One of them is gonna be filled up with the sauce. Okay, I'm starting to run out of place, uh, the space on this plate. So I think I'm just going to have to do a separate ramekin at this point. Ah, oh, have I gone out of little tiny cute ramekins? Oh no, this is my biggest nightmare. I don't know where the other one went. I wanted one to put my uh, chili garlic sauce in. That's a tragedy. Have I actually just gone out of the small ramekins? There's just no way. Where could they possibly be? You know what? I have this little teeny tiny plate as well. That's fine. This is nightmarishly full. Absolutely. All right. That's like that. That'll be fine. That'll be okay. Not ideal, but it will be okay. I'm going to just wash off my knife while I do have a second. And in the meantime, I've been heating my broth back up. I put my broth back onto the heat. Okay. I know this is not necessarily the world's most appealing plate of food, but we're making it work. We just have a lot of components. We have a lot of stuff going on here at the same time. Last component, my friends, is going to be a little bowl of my homemade chicken stock. Perfect. There we go. Okay, a lot going on here. Whew. Let's take a second. I'll meet, let me just organize everything. Let me organize my little plate. All the different stuff that we have going on here. Okay, because this is busy. This is really, really busy. 
My camera can't hold everything in it possibly, can it? I don't believe it can. Okay. Okay, something like that, I think. I don't know. I don't think I can actually make this look nice. There was just a lot going on here. There's a lot of components. Aha, soy sauce over there. I've banished you to that dimension. You know what, fine. We'll just get a little bit of extra space over here. Okay. Something like that. I think that something like that is what we're going to do here. Okay. And I'm gonna grab a couple of little chopsticks for the whole deal. Everybody, this is it. This is my chicken rice inspired by Hainanese chicken rice, although not completely authentic. I need you to understand something. This is gently poached chicken. Gently poached chicken, when taken care of, can be really juicy and really delicious. Not everything in cooking is about getting a super massive cereal and everything. Okay, so here's what we did. We made a homemade chicken broth. We cooked in the chicken broth some chicken legs and chicken breasts with white pepper, Shaoxing wine, dark soy sauce, ginger, garlic, scallions, and shallots. Okay, we poached it. We took the chicken out, shocked it in cold water, and painted it with sesame oil. Okay, the rice. This rice right here, we fried shallots, we fried garlic, we fried ginger. And we cooked it in this chicken broth right here, in the chicken broth that the chicken cooked in. Really delicious, really flavorful. We have a few sauces. This sauce right here is my soy garlic, my, my soy sauce, that's just some soy sauce, dark soy sauce, sesame oil, the chicken stock, and a pinch of sugar. This is my chili garlic kind of like relish, salsa kind of deal, with some cilantro, with some chili, with some garlic, with some ginger, um, and some lime juice in there as well. So we have the rice, we have the chicken, we have a little bit of cucumber as garnish, we have the homemade stock. Everything is super full of flavor here. Everybody, it's time for us to have a little taste. Let's grab a piece of this chicken. Okay, really, really juicy. We're going to go ahead and dip it into that soy sauce. Mmm. It's perfect. Mmm. It's tender, it's juicy, and the skin is so soft and delicate. It's not always about having really, really crispy skin. It's not always about having crispy skin. This dish is an excellent exhibition on poached chicken and it's flavorful. Everything here is super, super flavorful. This chicken rice that I made, mm. it soaked up all of the stock. Mm. It's really, really good. It's really flavorful. Mm. It's fatty from the chicken fat. It's lovely. And then of course we have some of the homemade broth. Mm. Beautiful. It's intense, it's meaty, it's exactly what you want it to be. Okay, and then you can even take a little bit of chicken, you could dip it into the hot broth. Mm. Mm. Super good. And then this is some of the like, almost like relish that I essentially ended up making here. Let's go ahead and have a little bite of that. It's gonna be really, really spicy. Take a piece. Mm. 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 That was really good. It's really, really tasty. Everything just flows into each other. It's such a simple meal. There's a lot of steps involved. I sure am one, huh? But that is really, really lovely. Wow. That's soy sauce. Mm. The sesame oil, the homemade chicken stock. This is a really special plate of food. Okay. Chili garlic is not too spicy at all. No, no, in moderation, it is perfect with the uh, chicken breast. Take some more of it. That might be a big bite. Mm. Excellent. Okay. Thank you for the reminding, Moonha. Sorry. 
If you have any final questions, comments, or concerns, see, I got some water in me. I guess I gotta have two waters because two people told me to hydrate. Does anybody have any final questions, comments, or concerns? I appreciate all of you being here. This was a bit of a chaotic Wednesday stream. Ugh. Some last minute adjustments. It was lovely to have all of you. Um, everybody, next stream is gonna be this Friday, 5 p.m. Eastern time, twitch.tv slash same as always. What am I planning for the next stream? We'll find out, Jack. Um, if you haven't done so already, please go ahead and join my Discord, exclamation mark Discord in chat. Um, if you can, please support the Patreon. You can type an exclamation mark Patreon. You can go to the About section. Um, all of it is going back to the cost of the groceries for the stream because I want to be able to do this full time. I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you so much for the Raiders for stopping by. I don't know if there's any more Raiders left over. Um, let's go ahead and find somebody for us to raid today. Let's see who's around. And if anybody has any final questions, now is your moment. Now is your time to do so. So, I see Eat at Dad's is live. We'll go ahead and wait Eat at Dad's. That'll always be a good time. Ugh. Oh, I'm gonna have a little bite of the chicken. That was really tasty. Oh, maybe some of the broth as well. Cauliflower is not mint, not in the slightest. Okay. And let's hit the raid button. Oop. Okay, it's good to have all of you. Thank you all, uh, take care. Have a really good rest of your Wednesday and I'll see you next time, Friday, uh, 5 p.m. Eastern time as always. Um, have a really good day, be safe, and I appreciate all of you. <laughs>